Hello friends, thank you for joining me again today. As we start out today, I want to remind you that we've re about our new book that we've released, The Fundamental Keys to Unlock the Plan of God. And as let me just read for you again, just a little bit from the back. It says, have you struggled with understanding why God placed you on this earth? If so, you're not alone. Every Christian will find themselves questioning whether they're running the spiritual race set before them by God at one point or another in their spiritual journey. Some of you have been discovered they've been trying to run someone else's race, or even a race that God has not called them to participate in. We all have a plan and unique purpose designed by God, even before the moment of our conception. We wrote this, this is something that I struggled with in the past when I was a young Christian, trying to understand exactly what God had created me for, what the purpose of my life was. And so we put together this book to share with you the things that God has taught us over the years to understand his plan and purpose for our lives. For us, this is not about selling books. This is about getting materials in your hands that we believe will be a blessing to you. It's available now on Amazon, and we've got the link there on the screen. And I encourage you to pick up a copy, and I believe it'll be a blessing to you. Let's get back into our study today. In the last video, we were talking about faith as a grain of mustard seed. We've looked at the fact and we've been looking over the previous videos out of Mark, after Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, where Paul said, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, <clears throat> not to think more of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. And we said that the thing about faith is the way it's taught oftentimes is it almost gives an impression that there's something that we can do to increase our faith. There's something that we can do to get bigger faith. It creates this works mentality. Jesus told his disciples, we're told in the Gospels, that it is the traditions of men that make the word of God of no effect. I've heard many people relate to traditions that a lot of the old denominational churches have as being robbers of the power of God. But we need to recognize that we all have traditions. We all have thought processes in things within our minds and our souls that cause us not to be able to walk in the power of God the way he desires for us to walk in the power in his power. And one of these traditions, I believe, is the way we relate to faith. Paul was telling his readers not to think more highly of themselves, but to think soberly because the faith that they were walking in was not their faith. It was the faith, the measure of faith imparted to them by God. Now, how does that faith come? Going back to Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, it says, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We've been talking a lot about this parable of the sower, seed time and harvest. Faith comes by sowing and sowing the word of God. If you look in the original language, this gives you almost a sense of a repetitive hearing hearing the word of God, hearing the word of God, sowing the word of God, sowing the word of God. As it is sown, that word gets planted within the soul. Then we water it with prayer and praying in the spirit. And then it begins to grow. And we set a deep root system. The mustard seed that Jesus talked about, if you go and research it, oftentimes it'll grow a root system up to five feet deep in the ground, sometimes six feet before you even see the first blade poking up above the ground. If you have faith as a mustard seed, if you have faith that is rooted deep with deep root system in the word of God, if your soul has been, if that word has been sown and given time to grow, you shall speak into the sycamine tree. It's a matter of planting the word of God, planting the word of God, putting that word within your soul and giving it time to grow. As you do that, the word begins to grow those deep roots. First the blade, then the ear, then the full fruit and the corn. We went back and looked at Genesis chapter 1 and talked about how the Holy Spirit is just waiting for us to speak forth words birthed in revelation knowledge. When we speak forth from revelation, gained from the word of God being harvested and planted within our soul, that revelation knowledge causes the Holy Spirit to go to work, releasing the creative power of God. 
But let me show you something in Colossians. And let's think about this for a, re for a, for a little bit here. Because a lot of people say, well, it can't really be that easy. It's, is it really that easy of just planning the Word of God? Then why are we not seeing this work more in our lives? And I believe an answer to that question goes in a lot of different directions. But part of it is seen here in Colossians chapter 3. We'll start in verse 1. It says, If then you be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Verse 2, it says, Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For you are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Set your affection where? On things above. How do we do that? We do that by setting our affection, by setting our attention on the Word of God. Spending time meditating, consistently focusing on the Word, planning within our soul. I believe our answer is found in these verses because if you look around and you start talking to people, even looking at your own situation, are we setting our attention, our focus on things above? The thing that occupies your attention the most is the greatest determinant of manifestation in your life. Your focus determines your manifestation. Let me say that again. I don't your focus determines your manifestation. I would encourage you to go back and look and keep you know we're not making this a religious exercise. But go back and look at where you are spending your time, where you are allowing yourself to focus on. If you are not focusing on the Word of God more than you're spending time watching the news, you are not going to be seeing the harvest of revelation knowledge we're talking about. The thing that you focus most on determines the manifestation you experience in your life. If you're spending more time watching sporting events than you are spending time reading and meditating in the Word and in fellowship with the Holy Spirit, you are not going to walk in the full provision that God has for you. So again, let's read this again. If you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. We seek those things that are above by seeking the Word of God. The more time we spend in the Word, the more we'll see the Word of God planted, those seeds of revelation knowledge planted within our soul. It just goes back to the same principles of farming. If a farmer plants a corn seed, he will expect a corn harvest. You're not going to see a farmer plant wheat and go out with equipment to harvest corn. Why? Because he knows he planted wheat, so he's, he prepares to harvest wheat. The thing that you are focusing the most on is what you are setting your attention on. Paul tells us to set our affections on things above, not on things on the earth. But unfortunately, what we do so many times is we spend more time watching movies, watching sitcoms, watching sporting events, catching up on the day's news than we do on the Word of God. Our affections, our attention is not on the Word of God. The Word of God is the seed of revelation knowledge. Just as corn is the seed of corn, just as a weed seed will produce weed. A mustard seed will produce mustard plants. The Word of God planted in the soul will produce revelation knowledge. But if you're not setting your attention on that, you have no reasonable right to expect manifestation. Now, we do serve a merciful God. And there are times where you'll be in a service and, and the anointing manifests and you receive from Him, regardless of what you're planning. That's what we call the gifts of the Spirit, the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of healing, the working of miracles. Those are acts of God's mercy, but they are always crisis-oriented. They are always manifesting because of your need, not because of your seed. What happens, though, is people allow themselves to become distracted from the Word of God 
They are not putting their attention, their affection on the things above until they come to the point where they have a situation or a problem or symptoms, a bill that needs to be paid because they have other things that are just more important to them. The word of God is the seed of God. The word of God is revelation seed. If you desire to walk in the faith of God and to be able to speak forth the word of God in the seed, the power of God manifested, you have got to plant the right seeds within your soul, which is your mind, will, intellect, and emotions. That's where Paul was talking about in Romans chapter 12, to be renewed by the transforming of your mind. We are transformed by the seed that we plant. If we are planting new seed, we will be transformed by that seed. What are our affections on? I believe that's what Paul is trying to tell us here. Let's go on in verse 3. For In Colossians 3, verse 3, For you were dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in, glorify, in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, covetousness, which is idolatry, for which things sake... The wrath of God comes on the children of disobedience, in which you also walked some time when you lived in them. But now you put off all these things, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication of your mouth. Lie not to one another, seeing that you have put off the old deeds, old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So Colossians 3, verse 10. Look at what Paul's saying here. And have put off... Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Notice that word knowledge there. Where does knowledge come from? Knowledge gained from the word of God. Revelation knowledge resulting from the planting of revelation seed. That is really the question. If you don't like the manifestation that's happening in your life, ask yourself, where is my affection? What seeds am I planting? If I'm planting revelation seed, I can re expect power harvest. But if I'm only planting a little seed packet of revelation knowledge, but planting bushel seeds of wheat and tares, because my attention, my focus is on my work, on catching up with the latest sitcoms, keeping up with the news, I have no right of expectation for manifestation outside of a manifestation of God's mercy. Revelation seed produces revelation knowledge, releasing which releases the power of God. That is why in Ephesians chapter 1, Paul went through, he's talking about the, you know, talking about we're sealed in Christ with the Holy Spirit. We're adopted. We've received forgiveness of sins in him. He went through all these things, talking about our position in Christ Jesus. And then he finishes with a prayer. And I want you to think about this prayer. If you or I were to have a prayer, and we were asked to write that prayer out for people to read a thousand, two thousand years in the future, what do you think we would write down? What do you think we would pray? Would we be praying for their healing? Would we be praying that they have manifestation of finances, prosperity. What would we be praying? But think about what Paul's prayer is. He's writing down, he went through talking about all these things of who we are in Christ Jesus. And then he writes out a prayer. And I'm just going to personalize this for you to show you how I like to pray this myself and I like to pray for other people. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory, I pray that you would give unto each person listening and watching this video the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of you. I pray that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened, that they may know what is the hope of his calling, what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what exceeding greatness of your power toward each one who believes, according to the working of your mighty power when you, which you wrought in Christ when you raised him from the dead and set him in his own right hand in the heavenly places. You see, what Paul was praying what Paul knew was that what they needed was revelation knowledge. They needed to have the eyes of their understanding open to what God had provided in Christ Jesus. God of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of glory given to them, the spirit of wisdom and revelation. 
that is what we need today. And I believe that is one of our greatest needs today is revelation of our position in Christ Jesus and who we are. Revelation of this measure of faith that God has apportioned to each one of us. As we grow in our revelation knowledge, resulting from the seed sown, we will begin to operate at higher and higher levels within the measure of faith. It's not that we're getting more faith. It's not that our faith is growing, that we're doing things to increase our faith. It's learned that we're receiving revelation. Knowledge is a result of revelation seed planted within our soul, given time to grow and develop that harvest of revelation knowledge. That harvest will produce revelation seeds. We plant it and we walk in it. It grows that deep root system that we talked about. And that's where Paul was saying, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. As a Christian, you have been raised with Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says that you become a new creation in Christ Jesus. You are buried with Christ. You died with him. The old man is still in the grave. But out of that grave rose a brand new creation. It says, old things are passed away, all things are become new. But then he tells us in Romans chapter 12 and verse 2 that we have to transform our minds by the renewing, by the tr sowing of the seed of the word of God. We renew our minds, we change our thinking by planting seeds of revelation knowledge from the word of God. And the thing is, a lot of people, and there's nothing, we don't want to throw away the Old Testament, we don't want to throw away the Old Covenant, but there's a lot of people who spend all their time looking at the Old. Until we gain a revelation of who we are in Christ, we should be spending time in the New Testament, because these are letters written to us. And that's where Paul was saying, in, ver in, in Colossians 3, verse 10, put on the new man, which renewed in knowledge. We put on the new man by sowing the seed of the word of God into our souls, giving it time to grow, to develop that deep root system. And when we become deeply rooted in the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus, we will speak forth the word of God and we will see the Holy Spirit manifesting that word, releasing God's creative power, not only into our lives, but into the lives of those around us. But it begins with sowing and reaping. It begins with sowing the word of God, sowing seeds of revelation knowledge. We do not gain revelation knowledge just by praying for it. It requires seed to be planted. Revelation seed produces revelation knowledge. Revelation seed produces that harvest of revelation knowledge. I've heard people say, and I myself have been guilty of saying the same thing. Well, I don't understand, you know, the word. I don't, I just can't get that understanding i've spent so much time praying but it just seems like i'm not getting anywhere i just am not understanding it it's because what we're doing is we're watering the ground without putting the seed in first and then we're wondering why do we just have muddy ground and everything is so unclear it is unclear because we've watered the ground without planting the seed to produce revelation knowledge we must first plant revelation seed and that's where jesus said in mark chapter 4 if you do not understand the principles of seed, time, and harvest, you won't understand the kingdom of God. The kingdom operates by seed, time, and harvest. Like seed produces like harvest. So corn seed produces corn harvest. Wheat seed produces wheat harvest. Revelation seed produces revelation knowledge. Words spoken from revelation knowledge produce the power of God. To walk in the measure of faith requires us to walk in the revelation. We've looked at this before, but let's go back to John chapter 8 as we finish out this video today. And I just want to remind you of what Jesus said here. We, You hear people talk about constantly, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Romans, I mean, John chapter 8 and verse 32. That is absolutely true. Some people will take it in John chapter 8 verse 31 where Jesus said if you continue in my word then you are my disciples indeed and you shall know the truth knowing the truth is a result of continuing in the word but what I want to look at is again up at verse 28 we've seen this many times in previous videos and Jesus said when you've lifted up the son of man then you shall know that I'm he that I do nothing of myself but as my father has taught me I speak these things as my father has taught me as my father has revealed it to me I speak forth that revelation Jesus 
only spoke from revelation. Jesus released the power of God with his words. He did not spend time praying for revelation. He spent time with the Father, planning the Father's Word, and the Word produced revelation. And from that harvest of revelation, he spoke. The lame walked, the deaf heard, the blind saw. He raised Lazarus from the dead. He, all of those mighty things began because he was speaking what the Father had taught him. As we plant those revelation seeds from the Word of God into our souls, and spend time fellowshipping the Holy Spirit, watering that seed planted in prayer, not praying for revelation. Paul did not tell them to pray that the eyes of their understanding would be open without seed being planted. He took time for the first 16 verses of Ephesians 1, telling them about their position in Christ, that they were forgiven, that they were adopted, that they were accepted, that they were sealed with the Holy Spirit. And then he said, with the seed I have just planted, I pray that the eyes of your understanding would be opened. With the seed that has now been planted of what you've just seen with who you are, I pray that he will reveal to you. You see, prayer is the water. The word is the seed. We plant the word. We give it time to grow that deep root system that we've talked about. And then we see the manifestation of the power. Going back to what I said in the previous video that God spoke to me over the past couple of weeks. We are praying for an outpouring of the Spirit when the world is waiting for an outflowing. The Holy Spirit has already was sent. He came on the day of Pentecost. He is dwelling in my spirit. If, you're, if you've received Jesus, he's dwelling in your spirit. It's a matter of learning to cooperate with the power within us that brings the revival we all seek. We're out of time. And I really appreciate you joining me today. We are seeking to understand the measure of faith, understand how that works, but remember, it starts with seed time and harvest. I really appreciate you joining me today. We pray for you. Please let us know if there's anything specific that you would like us to come alongside and stand with you in prayer. But until the next video, thank you for joining me. We really look forward to our times together, and God bless you.